yes it's today that i have completed 2 years in france technically my name is upasika ghosh and i am from new delhi india i did my bachelor's and masters in sanskrit from st stephen's college delhi university and then i worked in a couple of places and finally i came here to do my phd in the paris pari didero university and my subject is uh, so i am in the linguistic department and my subject is extended sanskrit grammar and the first indigenous description of bengali and when you have decided to study this first bengali grammar Okay, so this was an idea that was proposed by my supervisor. But initially, I wanted to study. I always wanted to study something on Bengali that has a relation with Sanskrit because I am a student of Sanskrit, and being outside Bengal has uh, in interested me more in learning Bangla on my own. So I have never studied Bangla academically. So I always wish to uh, study this language. and make it a useful uh, part of my study of sanskrit so something comparative or uh, any there is there is a, there is any connection between the two language i always wanted to study this and when my supervisor said that there is a chance that we could study the ba um, bangla grammar uh, based on sanskrit tools or whatever because initially the concept was not very clear on what we were um, we wanted to study but then this grammar came up in this a text that i am currently working on and we decided that okay we can give it a try and so this grammar is basically uh, a text that has been found uh, which uh, and edited by one of the scholar tarapada mukhopadhyay and that is the only text we have and it is not very much acclaimed or standardized so it is uh, believed that it is written in around the early uh, day, early years of the 19th century and we uh, are supposing that okay it is it can be uh, presented as the first standard uh, bengali grammar which is written even before raja ram mohan rai's gaudiya gaudiya vyakaran that was uh, during which uh, it was uh, so initially a book was written in around 1826 in english a bengali of the uh, a grammar of bengali language and then it was uh, read, the same thing was recreated in bangla as gaudiya vyakaran around 1830s if i am yeah not wrong and and uh, apart from uh, raja ram mohan hmm. what were the initiatives uh, initiative taken by european scholars or what what their interests so in the, so initially there were no bangla grammar written as a like authoritative text or any standard grammar the first grammar that was written by a portuguese uh, a scholar during the 17 uh, 17 30s or 40s i am not sure about the exact dates so the main reason of them were like they came to india and they wanted to establish their authority and mainly to spread the uh, ideas of the gospel they wanted the uh, mass to learn to know the language and to know the masses language they wanted to learn their language and thus was the initiative to create a grammar a, a grammar for their language which didn't exist before so yeah that was the first initiative and then by the end of the 18th century again another uh, european scholar hal had written wrote a grammar and then william carey and thus the uh, thing continued and this grammar that i am working on is supposedly written just somewhere near to the time of william carey maybe before or after as this grammar has a lot of similarities or at some places it looks like the grammar replicates the uh, grammar of william carey so yeah. and that was uh, which period the grammar of william carey it was in the early um, early 19th century or you can say maybe around the just the end of the 18th century 
initially uh, it if a person starts looking uh, the two grammar simultaneously is it will be like a replication of both so it's not very clear if william carey took help of this grammar in writing his own or this uh, bangla text that i am working on is a bangla transcript of the william carey's grammar so that's quite difficult to say and based on those uh, circumstantial evidences that this grammar of William Carey was written during his tenure in Fort Williams and that Mrityunjay Vidyalankar was there to help him in his work and he was the one who helped William Carey uh, construct reconstruct his first edition of grammar which had a lot of mistakes and everything which was not very uh positively acclaimed and then um, these circumstantial evidences let us uh, to come to a apparent notion that yes this bangla portion bangla version might have been written by mrityunjay vidyalankar based on william carey's grammar or either as a basis on which william carey's grammar was constructed that part is not very clear not so very clear because there is no such evidential uh, uh things that we have but based on the circumstances okay this either of that so so during that period how uh, they could have access to materials like william carey mm -hmm. or his uh, team <laughs> if we say that who are working on the grammatical form or to try to give the grammatical form based on the literatures because uh, for example if we take sanskrit as an example panini created his grammar and then panini's grammar was formulated and then based on that grammar various literatures and other uh, text were written later on but in case of bengali and other vernacular languages a grammar is based on the literature so how a literature is a literature or any text is written initially is the basis of how a grammar is being created so so there is not much consistency on how a particular person uh, different persons they are uh, writing their grammars but um, you will see that yes these are the things that are followed from the literatures so for example um uh, we see the dravidian languages they are not a part of the sanskrit language family which is which is a part of the indo european language family but yet we can see certain uh, grammatical concepts that are prevalent in the malayali gra malayalam grammars as well as the tamil grammars that follow the sanskrit grammatical tools but that does not necessarily mean that the language is coming from that language it's just a Um, the way the grammar is described is uh, borrowing certain tools in which the other grammar is described so like the chinese grammatical models that has been formulated is used for the uh, for the explanation of the gram grammars of japanese and so on so for example uh, the one tool that can be seen in my text that i can discuss uh, if we talk about what is a sanskrit model that is being used in this text so when we are talking about sandhi for example we are def simply in bang in the context of bangla or hindi or any other vernacular language we will talk okay this is rasva sandhi a or any other like a uh, plus a will be I'm sorry dirgha sandhi will be a a a so the resultant a will come from these 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 um, options but the way panini explains is a bit different not like what we study in these days so what he explains is he has formulated certain uh, formulas in which he uses codes so first a person needs to know what codes are these and using those codes he formulates rules so that it is uh, for him it uh, make it is the most economical way to explain anything so uh, if uh, i am saying about dirgha sandhi i will explain in a way that okay a plus a is equal to a this is dirgha sandhi but panni will say um, akah savarne dirgha which will make no sense to us but uh, which will make that akah with its savarna which is with its equal uh, vowels will make a dirgha sandhi but what is ak then we have to go through the end, the first uh, eight, uh, 13 list of letters that panini has given that ak means a e u r r 
these vowels they const uh, they the small vowels they constitute the ak portion so that is the same thing that has been incorporated in my text where the um, and the writer say, the grammarian says the shoman ok ba oche dirgho hoy so for that a person needs to understand ach which uh, has been explained by him before when he is introducing the sandhi but even before that when a text when my text begins it has given the simple uh, a a e e the simple varnamala of the bangla alphabet that we know today in a very common way but while uh, explaining sandhi he has given those um, uh, those series of letter in which panini has written well his series is different from that of panini because after panini there have been other grammarians who have tried to simplify the similar process of panini's and formulated their own series which is like almost similar as the panini's ashtadhyayi but now the one that my uh, text follows is of the mugdha bodha of bhopdeva which was um, prevalent during those times in kolkata or west bengal um, bengal region so that is how this particular concept is explained which is not very similar to what we know today so this is how a a typical sanskrit model is used in explaining a particular grammatical concept in this text like this is one thing that using these pratya these pratyaha sutras in explaining a particular concept this is one thing and then other if we well that is even followed today when we are talking about noun when we are talking about noun then a noun is divided into seven cases that's what we have studied in sanskrit and that is the, uh, how similarly even halhed and william carey they have explained their grammar uh, with prathama dvitiya titiya in the same way that sanskrit has been explained so i am pretty sure that this is not the exact case when how uh, grammar of bangla is explained in today's concept context what was the your basic interest to to do your doctoral this is here in france so well france was hmm. basic yeah so france was not my just op- the the option that oh i wanted to do this in france but uh, i having uh, studied academically sanskrit for 5 years in india and noticed how noted how things are being studied okay i have seen people doing phd in various things and i have somehow experienced um, very i have experienced the academic setup there so i wanted to know how this language my language is studied outside india so when i came here yes it was completely different uh, so the approach is different because what we study is uh, with a notion that we okay this is our language we know it back in india so we would like to study what we don't know we further want to explore things that are not known to us but here i have seen as studying sanskrit is a foreign language here so even the known aspects are being reviewed and researched further more and a lot of stress is given upon the second resources the researches that have been repeatedly over and over done on the primary sources so that is a very different approach that i have give, i am giving because back in india i have seen people giving stress to more of the primary sources rather than secondary sources but here secondary research is given is given a really great stress upon so it's so, a very particular yes, european or, or or i think so yeah it's a european approach approach european or western approach if you can say so what do you think uh, about the future of bengali language within 25 years or 50 years as as a linguist what is your uh, i mean a vision uh so i would say that now people that are showing a lot of uh, interest in this language academically a lot of uh, things that were not known to people will come out academically definitely because a lot of after i came here i came to know that okay there are certain aspects of this language that are being researched upon that i never knew of 
so um, if I could give one example, when I came here, I attended a conference. There were it was a conference of Dui Bangla scholars from various Bang um, Bengali territories, even from Europe, they came and they talk about their field of interest. So there was one interesting concept that I keep on telling. Uh, a person, he his interest was fragrance. And he is working on the uh, text, poetries and proses on the Middle Bengali text that deal with fragrance. And so he explained uh, one incident where Radha is going for Abhisara and then how it is explained poetically that she is um, uh, she is adorning herself with a lot of fragrance with this flower, that flower, this, that and then uh, how the environment is created overall and then he gives in a uh, in few strips certain fragrances and to and gives uh, it to us so that we can have a virtual uh, or some experience of how Radha must have been smelt during that time when she was going for the Abhisara. So that was something I was really overwhelmed like okay this kind of things people are studying people are researching upon like I could have never thought of. So even I think these kind of um, peculiarities or specific things uh, are quite uh, unique on the European part on the Western part I would say because um, there has to be a lot of more digging into done in the Eastern as okay they are they in in among the Eastern scholars or academician there is a thing that okay we know this we need to study this but to explore new aspects of certain things which are not very common is something very unique to the western study of the language so it can be also a kind of exotic yeah exactly uh, uh, can you can you just uh, no explain like explain that i don't know like i have seen a lot of things that are happening so right now i am working under um, uh, under my sup co supervisor on another project which is the uh, padas of uh, alaul saif and he is working on like i and i am working on making a uh, index analytical index of those words that are in those uh, padas and i am looking at the language okay this is so much middle bengali a particular word has so many versions such as and then we have to create the uh, modern version of um, those words so there is so, so much thing that we don't know and I am really not aware that how much Middle Bengali text research are being taken place back in India or in Bangladesh but here I have seen people are working a lot on this and the genuine interest that they have in working on these may, maybe like maybe there are interest of people that are there in India and back in Bangladesh because my co-supervisor is working with a scholar of Bangladesh so yeah and I don't know how to explain but yes no, this no, is I, the it's, it's so 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 uh, do you think that people are they are studying seriously hmm. uh, yes in India yes yeah I'm not very sure about India but yes those who have genuine interest in the language because nowadays I am think I am seeing that people are more moving towards academics rather than in not even in just in Bangla in every field they are not just going for uh, normal jobs and after coming here I have realized that yes academics is a major part that people are nowadays they are taking up even I am interested in staying in this research field rather than going to any other job or even teaching job so people are doing um, doctorate post doctorate but I have no idea if in India people are doing post doctorate in Bangla or Sanskrit I have no idea but here in every field people are even my supervisor said that yes there are postdoctoral positions in sanskrit which i don't know if india even has so i'll have to search for them so uh, <laughs> how long uh, you need to complete your so initially i was supposed to complete it by the end of august next year but due to the covid situation i got a four month extend so my supervisor is of the view that it's not possible for a human science subject to get finished within three years, but I'll try my level best. What's your name? Your... Emily Awesome. Thank you.
Then you can just uh, say that she is. Yeah, my, name, my supervisor's name is Emily Osoins. She is a researcher in CNRS. She lives in Bordeaux. And her major field of expertise is in grammar, mainly Sanskrit grammar. How is life otherwise in France? It's good. Now it's better because when I was in France, it was all COVID situation and then I went back to India and now that I have come back and I have realized that I just have one more year with me so I have to explore a lot <laughs> because people ask me oh, where have you went in France what have you visited I don't have any answer for them because it it has been more than it has been just to I will be completing my yes it's today that I have completed two years in France technically so and that is the thing that has that I am realizing that okay I have not lived in France actually and now I won't because now the things are coming back to normal and everything I would like to explore at least the area where I live in rather than also planning to visit other European countries just for the record. <laughs>